e niente da fare è palo e il Milan vince il trofeo Silvio Berlusconi errore di Samuele Birindelli Hello and welcome to episode 87 of Serie A Spotlight with your hosts Matt and Jake. Today we'll be bringing you guys a Milan special. We're joined by two lifelong Milan fans. Now, typically we're very inclusive and we talk about Serie A and all of the teams, but today we're doing Milan. That's basically, that's basically it. Yes, we've got Benji Flynn with us. Hi guys, I'm Benji25, here to talk about Milan, but also roast the shit out of Inter. <laughs> <laughs> And we've got Luca Panzavecchia. So I'm Luca, also known as Panz, 24 years old, been a lifelong Milan fan. And my hot take is that CDK is the worst player I've ever seen wearing a Milan shirt. Fucking hell. The question is, will he be the worst player that has ever worn the Atalanta kit? <laughs> the claim, we'll find out. <laughs> Do you think... Oh, I'm already screwing up. I got my age wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. What did you say? <laughs> that? I think I said 25. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> It's okay. So we'll start off with that now that we raise that point. Do you think that CDK will succeed at Atalanta? Let's ask Flynn first. I mean, I, I, don't, I mean, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. But... Um, Uh, it's unfortunate that it didn't really work out with us, you know, I mean, all of us, I guess, had really high expectations, especially considering that last year he was the, you could argue, only real major signing that we made. Yeah. Um, and even at the beginning of the season, you know, how it started, at the beginning of last season, rather, how it started, he, he did show, you know, those couple of flashes, um, the Bologna game comes to mind, yeah. the, the, the home game. Um, I was recently seeing the highlights of some of the Champions League games, even against um, Salzburg away. Mm. You know, he had a couple of moments, um, but you know, not everything works out. Um, I mean, even if he was to go there and be a success, I don't think it would be that great a tragedy because with us, I, I don't think. I mean, even with this four-three-three that we're playing with, I don't think he, he's no. going to find his, yeah. his place. No. I guess. But I think, I mean, he could, uh, just to, like a last point, I think he's a good player. Um, you know, he's still very young. I think he's only turning 22, 23 this mm -hmm. year. So, and, uh, you know, the Atalanta doctors give him a bit of encouragement, <laughs> <laughs> as they have they're known to do. I think, he, I think he can succeed there. Yes, mm -hmm. the story might have been different if that goal hadn't been cancelled, right? That yeah. goal he scored it was <laughs> unjustly cancelled. But anyway, Pons, what do you think? I think he's a quality player. Sometimes it just doesn't work out for players at certain clubs. I, I think he's still very raw. I think the formation we play doesn't really suit him as well, as Ben said. I mean, I think he will come good for whoever he ends up playing for. But I think I, I'm, I'm actually not sure if he has what it takes mentally to be a top footballer. Because, I mean, mm. in today's game, you can have all the talent you want in the world. But if you, if you don't have the right mentality, if... You're not able to take bad performances in your stride. I feel like mm -hmm. you, you can become a good player, but I don't think you can become mm -hmm. an exceptional player. And as we saw at the beginning with Milan, I mean, he was good. I think mm -hmm. he had an assist against Bologna. Yeah. He was playing mm -hmm. well. Even I remember him coming on in the first game of the season against Udinese, and he seemed like very solid, mm -hmm. creating play, It's taking flashes, on players, right? flashes. Mm -hmm. And it just was a, a, a downhill slope yeah, as yeah. the season progresses. <laughs> it had become so sad. You see the fans like cheering him on uh -huh. trying to motivate him and he's clearly just fucking up and everyone's just cheering him on to try to give him some like a little bit of an injection of confidence but he has never mm -hmm. got it i think he's better suited for atalanta if you look at them systematically and and you look at the players that have succeeded in the same position that he plays in like we can't help but look at him and think Ilicic, no when no. you think of the the size and the nifty footwork Um, it's kind of like what Ilicic brought, maybe as a, a sweeter foot to, to Ilicic's game and better vision. Um, but Charles, if he's, if he's molded into that Atalanta um, number 10 role by Gasperini, I do think he can have a higher ceiling at Atalanta mm -hmm. than he would at Milan, especially with the 4-3-3 with the as well. And a criticism that I saw about Pioli recently, I'm kind of going to jump into something else, <laughs> but still referencing this, was signing a new player and instantly starting him off in a brand new position. So for Pulisic, for example, who's a left winger by trade, um, it's been rumored that he's going to start as an attacking midfielder. For Milan, it's been rumored he's going to be a right winger, and he's only played on the right wing for Milan thus far. 
Same thing with Charles, is he was signed. Was he signed as a right winger? Was he signed as an attacking midfielder? He was replacing players in both roles. There was a time he even slotted into a false nine role. So I don't think there was that stability for him. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's all necessarily his fault. If I can add something, Please. I feel like he's kind of a victim of his own position because it's it's kind of like he doesn't have his, his own position. Mm-hmm. Kind of like mm-hmm. how like Kai Havertz is... Uh, and maybe Thomas Muller, but he sort of adapted his, his himself to be the best at that role. But I uh-huh. think he's still. I'm not sure if he's a he's better suited as a as a cam, as a right winger, as a as a false nine, as a striker. Mm-hmm. And I think something key to him succeeding in his career is finding out what position he's best at and really trying to develop his game there. Exactly. Otherwise, he's just utility. You, exactly. you sign him as a player with with versatility, and you just pop him in wherever you need. Exactly. Like. Exactly. So enough with the old, let's focus more on the new, right? Who are the top three Milan signings that you are most excited to see so far? Shall I start? Sure. Okay, I'm going to go um, Chukweze. I think Milan have struggled so much in the right wing department that bringing in a right winger of that caliber is a, is a great sign. So Chukweze for sure. I think Reinders has shown us exactly what he's capable of. I think he's a very, very nifty, talented player and I think it's an upgrade. I think we will see halfway through the season that it's an upgrade from Tonali, especially output-wise. And then I'm I'm torn between a couple, but I'm going to say Pulisic just over Loftus-Cheek simply because we know his ceiling and we know that there are five matches in the season where we're going to consider him to be among some of the best players that Milan have at the moment. So I'll say those three. Good. Flynn. Rudolf the Red Nose Ryan, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, just based off the couple of games I've seen. So, I mean, I didn't see much of preseason, but I saw a bit of the Barca game and mm. all last night against Monza. And Ryan, yes, for me, has looked really, really good. I really, really, I have a, I, I think the the success of our team this year will, okay, the, the, the attackers and, and, you know, we're all hoping that they can produce and, and we can be a team that scores a lot of goals. But I think in that midfield position, him and Loftus-Cheek together, if they hit, mm. I think we can really be a, be a dangerous team. I mean, now, like Ryan, just the way he can play the ball, the way he's direct you know he he receives it and goes wants to push yeah. forward you know yeah. mm-hmm. he glides um, he glides and and with with those demons we have on the wing you know <laughs> Chukowes and Leao who probably are good for 100 meters more than football <laughs> so a player like that who can start the counter you know it, it's we he can I think really bring something something to us you see mm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, all of them. To be honest, I, I mean, it's always nice to see new new players new players join. I mean, there are many. Um, do I think they're all hit? I mean, I hope they do. You know, um, but yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. I guess to who will be the best and who will be the next decathlon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. exactly. Bond. I'm gonna hop on the Reinders bandwagon. <laughs> Nice. I think he, I think he's he's fantastic. I think that we had a problem last season with uh, keeping the ball in certain games. Like I think of the many games we played against Inter, and we just couldn't mm. gain control of those games. Even with, the thing is that with Tonali, as much as I appreciated him as a player, I think he's fantastic. I think he he was worth the eighty million that Newcastle paid for him. Like I, I don't think he's he, he, technique wise. I don't think. He's as good as Brinders could be. At least mm. he's more of a sort of workhorse type player. And uh-huh. sometimes, or like despite all the good he's done and the goals he scored and the assists he's given, he would be one of the players that would tend to lose the ball a bit more cheaply. Yes. Mm, yes. You don't see that with Benasser, That's for true. example. When when we switched to a, a three a three four three, was it a ah, three four three? Um, Tonali seemed to be the worst player on the pitch mm-hmm. in midfield. You think of the Sassuolo game, the Udinese game, the Lazio game, and the Inter game. Tonali couldn't string a pass together, and he was often compared to Pirlo. I compare him more to Gattuso for his industry, personally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was, uh, he was unrecognizable in those yes. games. Mm. Uh. And your other two, brother? Um, Chukweze. Mm-hmm. Easy one. I mean, he seems like an electric player. Can't wait to have a sort of <laughs> actual decent right winger after uh-huh. <laughs> enduring the torture of watching fucking Messias. 
Salamaka is is good, but still, mm-hmm. I don't think he's, he's good enough to be a starting right winger in, in a team like no. Milan. And I'm gonna go for a bit more maybe controversial one. I like I like Musa a lot. Really? Okay. Cool. I like what I see. I like what I see. I think he could be the long-awaited replacement for Kessie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. find it maybe a bit symbolic that he shows number 80, and Kessie was 79, maybe mm-hmm. could be it's one up, one up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I think he's he's great on the ball from what I've watched. I'm not going to lie, I haven't seen much Valencia play, but I mean, I've seen around 20 minutes of him play like on YouTube, and yeah. um, even though he's a more box-to-box type midfielder from what I've seen, I think that he has the... Um, Ball control and the press resistance mm, to be yeah. to be placed in a pivot. He's, he's very um, versatile, and that's mm. what coaches appreciate about him. He had, I believe, in he had about six coaches or something in a very short span of time or something. Um, and he broke. He burst into the scene at 17 years old, uh, into the basically into the squad of Valencia, but then didn't really cement himself into the team for a while. Um, and apparently he was excluded for technical reasons from Valencia, which I find a little bit worrying personally. I'm sorry, but, yeah. but yes, um, in Jerry we trust, in Milan we trust. No? Exactly, exactly. Do the... Wait, whoa, whoa, what about you? Me? You're a top three, bro. <laughs> My top what, three? What is All this? right, I'm going to go... Okay, Reinders, I'm very excited to see. I'm very excited to see what Ruben can do as well, off this streak. And I'm gonna go for Rocca for man, because I don't huge. quite. I don't no quite one's mentioned know. him yet. Yeah, so. no one's mentioned <laughs> him yet. We have to deserve some. He needs, he needs a, a bit of a gamble. Yes, like he's a bit of a gamble. But he's very versatile as well. Like he can play on the wing. He can play uh-huh. striker. I'm curious to see what a striker who can run in behind mm-hmm. can do, because we haven't had one of those in so long. Like. Mm-hmm. Who was the last striker we had who was capable of running in behind? Carlos Bacca. <laughs> Carlos Bacca. <laughs> Maybe no chance. Rebic before he became horrendous yeah, when he used to play striker, I guess. But, uh-huh. yeah, no, possibly. but I, I, I don't Castille think... Castilla at Old Trafford. No. Castilla <laughs> at Old Trafford. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, what a fever. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus. Is, I think, shout out, by the way, to Romero. Oh yes, yeah. Ro- yeah. Ro- Romero as a utility player to bring on at the right wing in the 60th minute is going to be very, very nice, man. Yes, I have a feeling very he's going to be more... Important than we think he uh-huh. he will be, and, and it's also worth pointing out since since we all mentioned and, and you're the only one that mentioned him in your top three, Jake. In my opinion, the best preseason out of the Milan players, out of the new ones, was Loftus Cheek. Yeah. I think Loftus Cheek looked really really tidy. He in the last game against Monza, he was everything in that midfield. Reinders had a good game, yes, mm. but Loftus Cheek physically and just his presence, he was everywhere. He covered every plate of grass that there was. He's a beast. I don't think there's a player quite like him in Serie A right now. No. no. Yeah. The, I, I like a player with a similar style to him was Sergei. Mm-hmm. And now Sergei is gone. Exactly. Exactly. Do the injuries and consistency records concern you? <sighs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I mean, that's why we've bought all these guys, no? I mean, look at it this way. If... God forbid, touch wood, Leao is out now, there's Okafor. If, and Pulisic as well, who can play there. If Giroud is out, there's Okafor, there's, um, you know, Colombo's Colombo is still there. Origi's not going anywhere. <laughs> 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 so I I want to. No, but yeah. even on the right, you know, we say Chukueze, there's also Pulisic is going to play there as well. There's um, Salamakis is still there too and has experience in the league. I mean, so... Hopefully, for once in our lives, we don't have to deal with <laughs> for having four or five players out. But at the same time, if that were to happen, we should be covered. You know, I mean, hope again. It goes back to the point of of you know hoping that they all hit and 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 that everyone can can find their place in the team. But um, I guess that's the, that's the what made Inter great towards the end of last year was their depth mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and what needs to make us and what we lacked and what we should have addressed and I think have is the depth issue. Mm-hmm. Yes. Maybe, maybe purely will make substitutions <laughs> with, with, with having decent players on the yeah. bench. Yeah, hopefully one more striker uh, will come in and the centre back. And the centre back. Yeah, yeah, be, I've, I've heard rumours. I've heard yeah. rumours about Caldara, and, and, and that's <laughs> the last thing. That is the last thing. That how I do we? Want. How have we had so many simics, by the way, and none of them are related? It's true. And that, we've had so many simics. Like since I was a child, there was a simic. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. I remember one of them won the Champions League. Like, and then we had one who was young. He had a, an amazing friendly game. 
And he said something very controversial, I, like I some so legendary, bad, man. some really legendary so shit during an interview. Like he said something like Forza, <laughs> Forza Milan, blah blah blah. I don't know what Elliot said. And then he dipped, he vanished, and now we have another one out of nowhere. Right, yeah, this guy is quite quite the real deal. Huh? He seems so good. He's good. He center looks back, good. I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. He looks very um, composed. So, what would it take, guys, for you to sell Rade Kronich? Um. <laughs> a, a, a plan on who's going to replace him first and foremost sure, a, sure. a plan on, on using the money wisely when it comes to his value I wouldn't value him any less than 25 million 25 in million is 25 million bro you know how much uh, bro. McTominay and, and Maguire are going but for like look, 80 million yeah. combined bro Kronich is a quality would player would you rather he is a quality player but, 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 but yeah, hopefully <laughs> hopefully yes I agree but 25 million is look is I, agree. Agree. Who's there's, there's, million I think there's I'd accept 20 for him but there needs to be a plan on the replacement no. I feel like he's like way more important than people give him credit yeah, there is supply and the demand when we look at what Milan... Milan struggled last season, like we were talking about, when it came to Ben Nasser and Tonali playing together in that double pivot role, how Tonali kept on giving the ball away, there wasn't enough physicality, although they both, uh, they, they both are very industrious players. When Milan struggled throughout that period, Krunic came in and he tidied up that midfield mm-hmm. with his physicality. We know he can defend, we know he can attack, we've seen him in the attacking midfield role, we've seen, we've seen him as a left winger as well. <laughs> I think he is, in a brand new midfield for Milan, he is a midfielder who, who knows the team, who puts his heart on the line for the team, and I wouldn't sell him for any less than 20, I'd rather have him than 20 million. Okay, I'm um, with, that. <coughs> sorry, but with Benasser injured as well, yeah, I mean, then you, I think, getting too much change to a whole part of the pitch you know mm-hmm. yes. and uh, if Ben Asser was was fit and was playing I mean we all know that the, the midfield will eventually be, be Ben Asser Ryan just and off this cheek in an ideal mm-hmm. world right mm-hmm. but I don't know how long it's going to be I've been hearing some say November some say even February you know, so. that though. He posted some yeah he's posted gym videos the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah but so October, you, November and uh, given the current kind of situation we're in so close to the start of the season I, I personally think that it would be a bit it's it, it's a difficult move to do mm. and purely lo- I mean purely love screen of course as well. yeah, absolutely so you're, the, you're taking away one of the coach's favorite players apparently right. his salary demands no he's demanding yeah. a higher salary four million I believe something for his demands like that, yeah. but for me if if Kronich were to go the only justifiable explanation for it with to bring in a natural six like Maxime mm-hmm. Lopez mm-hmm. for example we don't so really have one apart from with no one no one I mean hear me out oddly uh, I, I don't <laughs> think he's got the physicality for that position no. I, I, I stop certainly. making me dream <laughs> <laughs> there, there needs to be, be a crusher I think yes I agree that advice is needed for Ben Nasser there's still work to be made in that position huh? but I think Having Musa as the only real crusher now, all right, Ben Nasser tackles, love the streak tackles, but we don't have a Kessie. And that was that, that, that's what we lacked last season. I don't season. think Kessie was a pure CDM, though. Do you agree no, with me? No, it was box to box. It was a box to box player. Yeah, I mean, he's strong and they could knock you off the ball, but he it's wasn't that like thing. that low lying six mm. absorbing mm. pressure part. Like, he, uh, spotting was pretty shit, man. Let's face yeah. it. <laughs> Not the strongest point. I mean, he had many strengths, but that wasn't one. Was <laughs> I think Musa kind of is a more modern, maybe slightly weaker, but better uh-huh. tech, a more technical type of, of midfielder and still help with us mm. uh, controlling games, like I mentioned before. Him and Ryan just keeping the ball, I think, will, will, will uh-huh. help us dominate possession mm-hmm. and just have more of a of control over games, like, you know. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, we've discussed this, we discussed this briefly, Flynn, before we started recording, but the the Monza game yesterday had Giroud um, on the ground for a bit too long for a preseason game, and it was kind of foreshadowing what we expect to see um, in a very long and complicated season that's to come, participating in three competitions. Is it really smart to go into a season with Giroud, Okafor, and Colombo as your three strikers? And Origi, bro. And Origi, yeah. <laughs> but let's assume that Origi didn't go to America, no? so everyone thinks he's gone. <laughs> um, I mean... Do we need a couple more players? I mean, I I wouldn't say no. You know, I mean, if we're gonna get another forward, and I personally believe we need another player at the back, and mm-hmm. um, for the simple reason that tomorrow is looking incredibly shaky. Mm-hmm. Tiao, I think, is going to be the 
hopefully the star of the season. Um, Kalulu again, you know, centre back plays on the right, or that, and Kair is looking older by the minute. Yeah. yeah. So I think that just one more experienced player at the back, no Serie A, doesn't need to be a superstar, doesn't need to be a, you know, 20 million, 25 million signing and, you know, a lot of hype. Or that. It's just a guy who can come in, you know, put in a shift, play 15, 20 games when you need him, he'll be there. And a player up front, I mean, again, same thing, you know, I mean, if we can just get that experienced striker, can come in, get, contribute 10, 15 mm. goals, you know, 10 goals, to be honest, today is a lot. Um, compared to what it was maybe in the mm. past, but again, a, a striker can give a shift, put in a shift, you know. Maybe, or we can get you know a, a, that sort of Ebra 2011 kind of signing, and then uh, Giroud yeah. will be the 10-15 goal striker uh, we can rely on. So, mm. but Okafor would be used more as a striker or as a as a left winger. I think he'll have to be used. I don't more think as a I don't think he'll want to be. It doesn't seem like the type of player who's going to be third choice striker. No, so that really no. makes the question if if we're going to bring in an extra striker. You know? I think having Giroud as your main striker only opens the door for Okafor mm-hmm. to get minutes in that position. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you have Leao in the prime of his life, like not a single percentage of fucking body fat on him, mm. um, you know, <laughs> I highly doubt his shape. Yeah, he's not displacing shape. him. You know. Yeah. Ah. Um, uh, uh, I'm still dreaming about that Bolay idea signing, yeah, back, if, I'm, if I'm being honest. Like, I, I, I do agree with you in the sense that G- Giroud is obviously going to be the starting number nine until, until Okafor really hits it off in that position, if he's going to be utilized in that position. Now, because there's that if, and if he gets injured, then we'll need to rely on Okafor. Then if something happens to Okafor, there's Colombo. I still think there needs to be more competition for that starting role, bringing in someone like Dia and then utilizing Okafor as a left winger, a right winger, an attacking midfielder or a striker. Um, I think it. I think it is very important for me not to sign another striker this season. Especially we spoke about versatility. I think mm. we need to be more versatile. Interesting. Okay, very good. Um, the next question is actually. Um about Milan's weakness, but I think we addressed it, right? Um, what is Milan's weakness currently? 3 to one <sighs> Defence, I would say the defence, personally. Well, uh, the defending uh, set pieces. Breaking down particular. low blocks. Okay. Oh, still, you think still it would be a problem? I mean, unless, the, unless, I, unless I see it not happening in practice, I'm still going to say that's our biggest weakness. And that sort of brings up a point I had in my mind that I really think that the players who signed this season are good. They're a good fit. Mm-hmm. I can kind of see this whole uh, algorithm thing working. I think assignings on their own, they're good. But as much as I respect what Pioli has done with Milan and how he's changed us from essentially a banter team to actual European competitors, I'm not sure that he has the like tactical ability to to move forward Controversial. With, with, with the team. I feel that um, he's kind of reached his limits with four two three one. I'm not. I'm not counting him out yet but I'm saying that first of all that needs to change we've seen that how it didn't work at a point in the season and we crumbled and he sort of adapted it a bit I just wonder if he he is the guy to to come up with something new Mm -hmm. some new ideas that fit the the players that we signed I hope so but I think for once in his life he has the tools to experiment with to try out new systems with you know before it was quite limited, you know, I mean, three starters drop, which was happening, by the way, every every month, like every week, rather. Mm. Uh, there wasn't really anyone with quality to replace these players. But now, mm. you know, there is like a, a season, out, a finish mm. outside mm. the top four is purely on purely. No, he has nowhere to no hide. Excuse. You, guys, you, guys nowhere think, to hide no. you guys think that he's on the hottest seat in Serie A at the moment? Yes, 100 Probably, season, yes, with the season, transfer yes. market I mean, mean I don't think anyone's come close no. to us in terms of signings or, or, or money mm. spent. Sarah. Well, when when you consider the fact that one of the reasons Maldini and Jerry didn't see eye to eye was one was predominantly p- purely in and the other one was purely out, <laughs> he's on the hot seat. This this year it's make or break for him. Now I know he won the the league with us, but like last year when we played against Inter, now you could say okay we didn't have many players on the bench that are real game changers. But when you haven't, when you need two goals. You haven't scored until the 70th minute and you still don't make a change. And the game against Monza last night, 
70 but, minutes preseason yeah. game and you still haven't made a change and then Giroud and Teo go out limping, to me his in-game management is the place where we need to see significant improvement. Mm-hmm. Now he has the tools. If he can utilize them, then, then I, I can't fault him. Mm-hmm. Yes, throwback to the Champions League semi-final when we were how many men at Joseph's screaming, <laughs> screaming <laughs> for a twenty, yeah. <laughs> screaming for a substitution. To Someone happen. predicted the exact exactly. substitution that happened. Right? A shout out to Joe. So shout, shout out, out to, to Joe. Joe. He's shown to be to be stubborn, and that's exactly my point. Yes, yes. and I think Lautaro scored shortly. Yeah, yes, 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 we were, yes, we were yes, saying minute yeah. seventy-five or something. It was, bro. But yeah, I have a hypothetical for you guys. Okay, this is. About a fan favorite, Manion. Let's hear it. Let's say Manion next season, so in two weeks' time. Exciting. Mm. Um, suffers another two month <sighs> long injury. Don't say that. <laughs> Does your opinion of Mike change? Yes, yes, yes. In, in, yeah. in the sense that we know what it, it's, it's the classic scenario with a, with a star that's injury prone. You look at a player like Garrett Bay, for example, when they're fit. They're among the best in their position in the entire world, and I genuinely believe Manian is up there, and he's essential to Milan's system as well. But you can't have now at least Milan have Sportiello instead of Tatarusanu, which is a massive plus in case we need a vice. But it shouldn't come down to it. He's a goalkeeper. Now there will be rotation with the cup. Maybe there will be rotation in some Champions League as well, because Sportiello is, is no joke in that sense. But if he's injured for another two months, it doesn't have to be Mike. It can be anyone who, who's that injury prone. To me, it calls for a reshuffle. And, and he's expensive, so you could make good money from him. For a goalkeeper as well, it's not usual that, I mean, they suffer these kind of injuries. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they can't have it happening the third year in a row. In a row. I, I think that yeah. that would ring alarm bells. And As in WhatsApp um, of March and February, March and April 2021 doesn't allow me to have an opinion on money. He's a Donnarumma apologist. No, I mean, <laughs> well, but, no, no, seriously. Um, no, I mean, we all know the quality he has and, and how important he is, even from a build up perspective and how he, uh, even his, I mean, just his leadership alone, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of. Like the, his balls are as big as a cow, is that? Yeah, <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, but you know, it it would be a pattern, and I, I we thankfully now have an experienced reserve. Mm. But I don't want to see the reserve. I want to see the be- we have you know three players who are the best in the world or one of the best in the world in their position. Mm. That's yeah. Maniante and Leo. I want to see them every week. You know. Yeah. And it will be a pity, a great, great pity, if again, you know, we have to go through another manianless period. And mm. it will start, you know, putting questions into people's minds and, and, and it will be unnecessary because we all know his talent and, and the only thing holding him back will just purely be injuries, which is a real shame. Mm. Right? Mm. So, Agreed. Where do you put him? Top three? In the world. Yeah, in the, the world. world. The summer, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. I'd, I'd, I'd put him in top five best keepers in the top world. Top five, I'd I would put him, put him, top, put him top three. I'd put him top three simply based on his presence. You don't find yeah, that in a keeper yeah, yeah. much. Mm. It's crazy, yeah. So, and his confidence he's is next level. Huh? He's impressive, yeah. honestly. Yeah, he's really, really good. Um, and it's a pleasure to have him at Milan, obviously. Now, do you think that being owned at the time by Elliot, who also owned Lille, had something to do with Milan's acquisition of Maniano? Do we not talk let's, about let's that? Let's not bring these conversations <laughs> to light, because you know what happens when they're brought to light. Bro. It certainly helps. So, well. Serie B shouts for three seasons in a row. Like. Okay. No. Um, uh, we, need, we needed some help. Well, not every single team can offer... Uh, if they're paying 100 euro for a player, they can offer a 2 million euro loan, a player from their Primavera, which they value at around 18 million, <laughs> and then promise to pay the rest of the amount of money next year if they decide, yes, <laughs> with the buyback option on the player they would have loaned. Exactly. Yes. I yeah. think everyone knows what I'm talking about. Exactly, yes. And, the, and there are many of them, right? Yeah. There are I mean, Napoli sent youths to France whenever even set, set <laughs> foot in France, bro. These players spoke in an interview that they've never been to France. But it's fine anyway. under the radar, man. Yeah. Jesus. But anyway, um, next season, fast forward, the next summer market, right? 
let's say Milan need another sacrificial lamb, another Tonali style sacrificial lamb to raise some funds. Who would you, well, who would pain you less to see leave? That's an unfair question. For the sake. <laughs> Tomori. Tomori, I, for Ooh. me, same. Tomori. I don't think that. Tomori is strange. When he joined Milan, I was like, this guy is the fucking mm-hmm. real deal. This guy is going to be incredible. But I don't know. It's either uh, he got found out. I believe his game is, is a bit flawed. I don't think he's maybe tall enough to be a top, mm-hmm. top center back. Uh, he's fast and he has other attributes. And I think one of his, his main downfalls is his concentration. Do you, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, don't sure that, yeah, I don't feel like it, that was a thing in the first season, but mm-hmm. last season and, and even the season before, we didn't see that reliable, you know, every game yeah, is going to exactly. be a top, top player, Tomori. And uh, that makes there me was, question it. The, the classic case in point of what you're saying is that game against Chelsea where, where he gave away that ridiculously stupid penalty. And then did the soft call. Yeah, let's, let's be honest. It was a soft call. But you shouldn't be, you should you don't be doing put that. Yeah. two hands on the player uh-huh. when, when you're right uh-huh. behind him in the box. Like World class players don't get that affected exactly. by emotions, you know. Now, now oh, oh, a point about Tomori. I agree with you guys that he would be the, the sacrificial lamb. But just to stand up for him over here and say that he is the best centre back at Milan. And he doesn't have that other center ah. back to look up to someone to lead by example you look at all of the greats you look at for example i think um, john is going to have something to say about that yeah you? in in the near future yes but ah. my my point is tomori is leading by example and he didn't have someone to lead by example for him with the exception of kier um thro- throughout a series yeah, no mm-hmm. let's, let's be real. exactly you know, like, so exactly so no, i don't I mean, think he had a direct mentor <laughs> For me, the transfer window or transfer market rather is so unpredictable. I mean, can we honestly say that at this point, at this point last year, even with all their money mm-hmm. and whatever they have, that Tonali would be a fucking new class. Yeah, <laughs> who's there? Yeah, I mean, who <laughs> would have mocked the <laughs> Who would have predicted that? So we really don't know what can happen. You know, I mean, it's it's so unpredictable. So yeah. it's it's hard to say who we're gonna sacrifice, who will leave. Who I mean, for all we know, and I, I mean, hopefully, Tomori will. Have his best season yet? Yeah, I think it's quite the word die for him. As and, well. and I put, think he needs uh, to have I mean, put crazy season, season behind you. You know, now you're the, the leader. You've been with us for a long time, and and mm, and, and you can just go on and play your game. I mean, we all know he's one of the best defenders in the league, and 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 he's got nothing to to prove, in my opinion. He just needs to play himself. You know, yeah, play, mm. play play his game rather. Than, yeah. Yes, but of course you take into consideration the fact that he's English, so it raises his value <laughs> a little bit. You know, you can. Rip off the Patriots. Come on, let's see in your opinion. In my opinion, I think you could make for a Premier League team 40, 50 40 million. million. Yeah, yeah, I think. I, 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 I'd I'd say Premier League team with the way they say yeah. spend money on players. Maguire is going for like 35. If, if you've got a team that plays three at the back, Tomori, I think, would be insane. And a three at the back for him, you put him yes. on Atalanta, Tomori, he's going for 80 million. <laughs> <laughs> he had a great with the game. Doctors cooking, exactly, with the doctors <laughs> cooking him up. He had a great game against Spurs. I think he won He won man of the match when we played at three and at the back, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah he did a yes, job on Kane. So, yeah. I mean, when. Mentally, I think if if he really puts his mind to it and mm-hmm. becomes a bit more consistent, he can be up there. But uh-huh. yeah. we'll see. I, I think he's got that dog, he, which he is does which is the best dog. part of his game. But it's also the worst part of uh-huh. his game, mm-hmm. having that dog. Did you guys see that um, viral picture of Leo Giroud and Theo at the gym? Yeah, I did. you did. You know the one with the shirtless and they're flexing yes, yes, and yes, they're yes, all yes. jacked out of their minds. Oh, yes. Who would you pick for your girlfriend to spend the night with? <laughs> Bro. No. Oh my god. Uh, on her likes no. and dislikes. Uh, <laughs> no. I, I feel like I, I would choose Theo. Nah, man. Just, just because. She'll never, never be the me. same. And Bro. listen to me. She'll go through shell shock for a month. And, 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 and she'll barely speak. She'll be like, no, no, I, I, I don't want to talk about it. And then you'll get her back. But she's definitely not going to be into him after having sex with him because he'll destroy her. He will destroy her. Look at Giroud. She might fall in love by looking into his eyes. Leao. Le, le, like, look at Leao. He's fucking no, you can't, gorgeous. You can't do with your Leo, you, 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 might, you might as well. <laughs> she's never looking at you again, man. You might as well send her on the front line. 
<sighs> no, really? I'm gonna say Giroud because gonna say he's a family man. He's a respectful Christian, you know. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's a good guy all around, you know. I want what's best for him. So. <laughs> I agree. I think he has the best values. I think he's the most, he's the most respectful before and after. You know, he's not gonna. He doesn't really have that dog in him, you know. He's a, you know, so he's a I, I would trust him. I would mm. trust him the most, at least from the three. That's great. <laughs> great answer. Who would you choose? Who would I choose? No, I think I'd, I'd have to go with Giroud as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, go, I'm not going Teo, Teo, yeah. Teo, bro. Teo. Teo. She's not, she, she's not going to be into Teo. He'll after change her forever, bro. Let's just say that. Then, look, she might build some tougher skin after being with Teo for a night. But anyway, bros, um, those are my Milan questions. I have a few questions um, about other non-Milan related things. But before we move on to that, do you have anything you'd like to say about Milan? Any hot takes? Any, any observations? Opinions? <sighs> what I can say is that I haven't been this excited and curious mm. for the season in a long time. I think we all remember the Young Hong Lee. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Stars for market and <sighs> I don't know, man. It can go anyway. I'm just excited for the ride and mm. the summer see, started man. with Maldini leaving, Ibra's retirement, Ton Hale being sold, yeah. mm. and ended up with you know eight, nine new players and Jerry watching Jennifer Lopez dancing on the table. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I mean, listen, I, I, I mean, just my opinion. The team is there, you know. We, for the first time, I think, can have a really sense of optimism where. I think we can say, you know, safely say that we are one of, if not the best squad in Italy, and let's go, you know, and and let's let's bring on anyone who who comes. I mean, we have a really difficult start to the season. You know, the first Marotta cooked in the <laughs> in the calendar. Gosh, we the first six games. I think we have four away. And we have to go to Rome. We have the derby. We're in for one. So it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be a very difficult start. Like I said, I think Pioli is on a hot seat. <clears throat> um, but I think, especially yesterday, it showed that there's a team spirit. You know, everyone who's there is happy to be there. There is quality, and we've retained. You know, we've lost, but we've also kept retained. You know, our important players. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. let's let's go. You know, we, we we can. I think we can compete with anyone, and mm-hmm. we should aim this year to win things and and right the wrongs of last year. Can mm-hmm. I can I add something to Please. what you said? <sighs> Who do you think is the best squad on paper in the say uh, on paper? Us. Mm. I say uh, uh, us. Look, in, ter- in terms of squad value, I do believe we're probably the most valuable squad right now. Yeah. I think I transfer think market would, would confirm that. Honestly, two more acquisitions for Inter and they're closer. Uh-huh. I think. Well, you, can't, you can't not replace Don man. I want to say yeah. so, I want to say something about Inter. This is the only thing I'm going to say about Inter. I'm going to go on a run for two and a half minutes and, okay. and, and that's it. Let's see. Back. Yeah. I yeah. 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 I've been proven really wrong about what I'm going to say but I, it's killing me to sing uh, Pyongyang Gazzatalo Lost Sport praising them all the time. Uh, Inter have lost. All of their goalkeepers, they've lost their best centre back, their mm-hmm. best mm-hmm. one of their, I mean, their top, best midfielder. Top two uh, in the Champions League final, he was their best midfielder. Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. and up front they lost two out of their four options in Lukaku and Zeko. Now they bought Sommer, they bought um, Turam, Turam, they bought Fratesi, Bissek, and whoever the hell you want to improve, you want to include Quadrado, <laughs> Quadrado, <laughs> whoever they want to improve. If you go position by position, right? Goalkeeper, who have the better one? Milan. No one's going to deny that. At the back, okay? You have Chao, who's emerging. Tomori in his prime. Teo Hernandez in his prime. Calabria has been a veteran for 10 years. You have Kalulu as well, who's good. Kier, even though he's maybe on his last legs, he's experienced as the captain of Denmark still. Inter, who do they have? A 37-year-old at RB. You know, Dev Rai, who, look, who, who was... Looking yeah. on on the down, Bastoni is great. You know, I'm gonna deny. I'm gonna de- deny them that. Could Bissek be Chow? You know, mm. that's that is their mm. uh-huh. their, their gamble. And Darmian, who I appreciate a lot, is, a, read, good, is, is, is a good player. You know, and and but again, 35, 30, 35, 38 games in a season. Is he going to be the game changer in the middle? In the middle, I think they're solid. You know, I won't go into the. Number 20, but <laughs> you all know how I felt about him before. <laughs> so, and up front, if Lautaro Martinez gets injured, as he was today in, for their friend that he didn't play, what, who is going to score for them? Uh-huh. Who is going to score for them? They're interested in, in 
I'm not trying to say his name. Balogun. Balogun, Balogun. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. He seems solid. So had one good season in France, mm-hmm. no? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Inter are a good team. They've both good players, but with all the respect, if they're going to search last year, they were really good and and they made the Champions League final. They made the Champions League final. They beat Porto, Benfica, and us. Okay, and us in in a crap run of form. And with, with, with the only player who can make a difference out. Okay, so if they they don't even know how they beat Porto and Benfica, fine, they beat them. Brilliant, well done. All right, Champions League final, they played well, good for them, you know, but they still lost. Mm-hmm. All right, this team, you know, they're saying, ah, Brozovic won't matter because Chanaloglu played there for all, 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 all last season. Yeah. They lost 12 games in the league last year. Everyone keeps forgetting that. They mm-hmm. did a month. Facts. They didn't win a game. You know, so I'm not saying they're a bad team. I don't think they are. I, I think they're good. You know, I, I'm not going to say that. And if they get this Balogun and if they get whoever and Demiral, I think is being mentioned, mm-hmm. can they be equal to us? You know, yeah. I think so. But I really don't believe that they are head and shoulders yeah. the favorites to win the league. They might win the league and I might be proven like a real donkey, what I'm saying. <laughs> but. And they obviously on the flip side have the f- the, the four games home to. Start. I think in the first ten games they played two teams or three teams who finished in the top ten last year. Wow. So they have a nice cozy start to the season. So, but if you're telling me the squad, okay, no, I don't think there is a team with our depth, with our versatility, and with the 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 talent that we have. We have the best player in the league. We have the best goaler in the league. Palette Fanta Calcio defender. We, we, have, yeah. we have the one everyone wants. So, <laughs> my five minute rant, or however long this has been, is over. And I'm going to take a break for that. That's that, 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 that feel, I think, mm-hmm. was so yes. fundamental to their play. Like the Champions League mm-hmm. final, it was pinging 60 yard balls. You know, I think uh-huh. their feel is lost. And one more thing is that Marcus Turam. I'm not, say, I'm not trying to say this out of spite because he did the whole. Yeah. snake thing you know but mm-hmm. um, look the guy is like 25 26 he's never had a season with more than 10 goals I think so he's my age he's my age and he scored 30 he scored 30 I'm 27 so this this year uh-huh. he scored 30 career goals I mean this, you're gonna hang your hat on that you're, you're gonna replace you you 27 this year in 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 my uh, my age, <laughs> you know, been this season. This season, this season. Like, how old is this guy? A thing of mystery. <laughs> okay. Um, I I think Milan have the best squad. If you're looking at a squad of twenty people, can't forget. And Napoli. you're you're. That's exactly the point I'm about to make. You can't forget Napoli. But Kim. Will Kim be a massive loss for Kim and Spalletti? Kim, Kim, Kim and Spalletti, massive, massive two, massive, two massive losses, yes. But th- that team wasn't just Kim and Spalletti. That, that team have two of the most devastating players in the league. They've got a player like Zielinski, um, right wing. And some are quite, quite similar to, to Milan in the, in the last two seasons. But you can't see the way that they blew everyone out of the water. It's, it's the same 10 people. That did it last year. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. same 10 people on the pitch. I, I don't think that we can throw Napoli away because of these two teams. Spalletti was so key to the way they play, yeah. the way they dominate games. I feel like on paper, losing Kim puts them a bit down, but then we can't forget. I don't think you should throw away the, the, the reserves as well. You know, I mean, everyone says, yeah, oh, Napoli don't have anything, but mm. they do. You know, but I mean, they do, they do. Raspadori, Simeone, Elmas, they are superstars, but they're, they're, they're great. They're when, when, when Elmas comes on, he's great. super nifty, mm. like on, yeah. on the ball. Yeah, he looks great. great. Now they have, a, they, yes. they have a year together as well, but they achieved a lot. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they're, they're, still, they're mm-hmm. still good. I think Roma are an interesting team. You know, they still need a forward, I think. Uh-huh. And they're not really spending as Mourinho mm-hmm. likes the highlight. Yeah. But, um, you know, if Indica hits and, and Awar and the players who they have brought in, they could be a bit of an interesting team. Maybe not mm-hmm. to win the league, but, but uh, I definitely. I think Mourinho's tactics are outdated. Yeah. Uh, I, I think don't feel like he Oh, has but that. He, can, he can get top four domestically with the way he plays. I, I don't. Roma don't Juve worry have I hope no I don't regret I mean Juve, Juve just but got in way out, so but then Juve they, they got no one it's true but with this yeah. exact team last year they on the pitch they finished they, top four yeah. they second, finished second as a, yeah. do not, one game a week as well yeah. So. Yeah. do not forget Atalanta. that aside from us Atalanta have had the best Mercato yeah, this true. season 
Skamaka El Bilal Traore Skamaka El Bilal Traore and there, 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 was, there was another one Potentially the Catalare yeah. Potentially the Catalare No, Atalanta will be strong They brought in Bakker on the left Bakker is Bucker. the one Bakker as a, as a left wing back I feel like that, that's somewhere mm-hmm. they, they lacked ever since mm-hmm. losing Gossens and by the way look up Bakker highlights and Kolasinac. the way he add Kolasinac. Oh, there goes Kolasinac. the way the way that Bakker runs is like nothing I have ever seen before in my life he's like a crab <laughs> yeah. he runs sideways <laughs> to the ball bro it's the most odd thing you watch his highlights and, and, and you see it you always have that thing which you know punts can say the technical term as a medical man you know the <laughs> What do they give? What do they inject them with? <laughs> Steroids. <laughs> <laughs> There isn't some like fancy word which only like. Uh, like the word isn't coming to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> really, 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 they, they give them some fucking potions over there. <laughs> yeah. man. It, they, it's like some crazy things. It's man. similar to I think what what the, what the thing, Germans yeah. used to give to to, to the Nazis. That's what, what, what they did. Captain America. With, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not say anything that can get us here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Crystal yeah. meth is what I'm saying. <laughs> no, By the way, I, it's El, Ber- El Bilal Toure, not Traore. That's, uh, yeah, close yeah. enough. Man. Uh, that's I think that's an o- edit. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we go back and edit it. No, the overall point is that I, the league is open. Right? I, I don't think there's one clear-cut favourite. Mm-hmm. You know, you can say Inter have problems, Milan have problems, you have problems, Napoli. But I think, honestly, I think we have as good a shout to win the league as anything. Now, if we do that, I don't know. It, we have a brand new team, brand new system. It's very difficult for the team to gel. You know, on, this is strictly on paper. We know that counts for nothing. But why shouldn't we be optimistic? You know, what what, what reason do we have? Even in preseason, you know, even though we haven't won games or blown away teams, it's looked solid. You know, it hasn't looked phenomenal. But but the it, thing it is, like what, what I worry is that progress. I've never seen a team sign what six, seven new starters and instantly succeed. Think of Milan when we did that crazy transfer market. Think of Monza last year. I mean, yeah, Monza te- top ten finish. Or yes, nine, yes, nine, yes, nine, yes, nine, yes. Nine, but think about how they started the season. I, mean, maybe, I think they were in the relegation zone for most yeah. of the first half of the season, yeah. and they really picked up. Yeah. I, I do mm-hmm. feel that. A big part of football is is gelling and having a certain yes. understanding of your teammates, and that really makes the season a question mark for me. I think on paper we do have what it takes, but I feel like that aspect shouldn't be taken for granted at all. Uh, I, I would like. I don't think it's going to be instant success for Milan, and I think we'll see a slow start if we win the league or, or do very well. It will be towards the latter stages of the season when the team has gotten used to each other. Um, but with that being said, I'm relying on Pioli in order to start inserting these players slowly, slowly and introducing them in a comfortable way for them to be confident. So starting with Giroud up top, you know what I mean? Starting with with um, uh, Krunic in the team before moving Pulisic to the attacking midfield role, for example. I think it's going to take a lot of work to kind of start because some of these players haven't even had a full preseason. With the team, mm. so it's important to to start with some rotation, and then okay, we we brought this Oka for on um, ten times. He seems to be really effective to the team. He's doing great things for the press. Okay, start him next game, mm, yeah. and and it moves in that system. But if we're to start with all these new players starting instantly, that's not going to be a successful. That's season. why we should keep Krunic, man. Mm. I think simply for that reason yes. of even the dressing room figure. I think at this point he's he's, uh-huh. he's quite a figure in the dressing yes. room. You know, he's he's been there a while. Is the last itch. Is what? Yeah, like, exactly. The, 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 the last fourth, itch. fourth captain, maybe. Honestly, yeah. honestly. It's always a good sign. And it's a sign that you're a top team when players come in and they need to earn their yes. spot. Sure, man. If you come to a team, if you arrive at a team and you're in the starting 11 immediately, that doesn't motivate you at all. If you're coming on and you're getting 10 minutes here and there and then you start the odd game in the Coppa, you really feel the pressure to, mm-hmm. to impress. And mm-hmm. I think that's the... The most important thing that, that purely remembers over here. Don't just throw everyone out there. And I'm sure nah. he won't. I'm sure he won't. I'm sure everyone will go crazy about it. Uh, you know, isn't the, playing the best players. On that note, <laughs> he hasn't. He's shown in the past that he does maybe take a bit longer than he would expect to integrate new players. I think he's always, in, apart from CDK, purely, look at Chow. For it's example, Chow, Chow, he, Chow. Took, he took long to introduce him. But Chow in Germany was considered to be an error-prone defender no. in Germany. <laughs> When Pioli decided to utilize Chow, he always played incredibly. He was ready. It's true. I, Same I with Gabbia. Bad word to say about Same Chow, with Gabbia. When he utilized Gabbia, he, he was good. 
Like, We're gonna need to be patient. I mean, exactly. I'm, I mean, I'm not on on other teams Twitter or or X as it is. <laughs> it's, no, it I'm is. not on other teams X. <laughs> But um, like us, you know, you know how everyone goes nuts on and, and starts criticizing online and yeah. and, and 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 the media love criticizing us. And, and it's gonna take time, and, and we're gonna have to be patient. And there may be that odd, crappy result every now and then. But it's just a question of of I think weathering the storm. And if the team settles, as I hope it's gonna settle, I really, really believe, strongly believe that. We are one of the best teams, if not the best team in, in Italy at the moment. So, who are your top four for next year? Let, let, let's get, let's get that out there because us, there's no right answer, obviously. But Us, Napoli, I think Juve and Inter. I, and I'm going to say, I'm, this is my hot take for, for the year. This year. If Inter stay as they are, if they don't, they don't, I'm preface, they don't get another striker. They don't get another defender. And Skamarzic, the Primavera player, <laughs> doesn't keep calling them problems or whatever. But I think they will be a challenger for top four. I don't think they'll be. I think the league this year will be between us and... Today, on the 9th, or the 9th August at 20 past 8, <laughs> for me, the top two are the champions of last year and, and us. I'm going to be a bit of a madman and exclude mm. Inter from my top four. Ooh. I think Lazio... Shouldn't be ruled out at all. I think they've made some smart signings. Like they Kamada. Lost player, yeah. they, they did, it's true, but sorry, boy. I trust, I trust better, in better. Sarri and exactly Sarri's teams age like a fine wine and I feel that he's really got the gears going. I mean this team was phenomenal last year for the most part of the season and on paper. I don't believe that they are even in the top four on paper, but the way he has them playing bar when they played against us and we Spank them basically. <laughs> but, um, I, I think I think Milan will be in the top four. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not giving any particular order because mm. I think it's impossible to say. But Milan, Lazio, Napoli, and then Juve. That's what I think. And Atalanta fifth and Inter sixth. <laughs> it's a really difficult one. It's a really <laughs> difficult one. I think Atalanta will make top four next season. Um, in place of who? But that's the problem, right? Hey. I don't know. I, Lazio Something, maybe. yeah, in place of Lazio, but then I also already. Right, I so mean, the two Roman clubs and and Atalanta are bloody dangerous. So, so, yes. so it's 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 tricky, man. To, to, to I have that. I have a feeling it's gonna be in no particular order: Juve, Milan, Inter, Atalanta, dude. Juve, Milan, Inter, Atalanta. In no particular order. No Napoli, bro. No, no Napoli. Napoli. I have a feeling. Yeah. I have a feeling. It's not going to go as crazy, well for them crazy. with Rudy Garcia. It's true, it's you true, saw true. he played Raspadori in a double pivot in a friendly last time. <laughs> That's absolute insanity. Yeah. But, but we'll see. I don't know. They, I mean, they might turn on him, the players. Gvara, Gvara Ozyman, and Leao. And we don't know what Ozyman's saying. The top three right? players in Serie A. You know, they have two mm-hmm. of them for me. Mm-hmm. Ozyman's been... The whole Saudi thing has been mentioned. Now for I, a don't, while I now. don't think he'll go, but... I highly doubt he, he, he seems... He seems... He's a man from a humble background, huh? The chance to make literally every person has ever met in his life wealthy mm. might sway him. Because huh? mm. when you come from humble beginnings, you really see Look at how Saudi important Mane. money is. You know, I would have liked that, though. I would have wanted to go, even in terms of quality of Serie A, I feel that of course, we can't I'd, be losing our best players like that. I'd like Ozzy We really did lose quite a few, I yeah. think, this transfer. Of course. Uh, guys, SMS. just as a, just as a side note, we're losing to Trento. Oh, <laughs> what's the <Great>. score? <laughs> Top four, baby. <laughs> We're losing to AC Trento 1-0. Oh I think we just conceded five minutes ago. Who scored? Who scored? <laughs> <laughs> we played a strong team, though. I mean, all the players didn't play yesterday, but I think we, no, I think we actually lost. No, we lost to Trento. I don't know if we're losing. Okay. Oh, Sip, God. Sipos scored. Sipos. 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 Him up, heard it here first. The <laughs> <laughs> and you want, to, you want to hear some? You want to hear some something interesting? Please. Kamarda played. You know that that like a, Fun, the kid, a, the fourteen. You know yeah. that ah, he, he played he play. like ten minutes. Oh my <laughs> God. that type of game. Yeah. Yeah. Even, He's like. played more in preseason than Origi. <laughs> Literally, Origi, the next, the next cockroach. Origi, <laughs> the next Bakayoko. But Literally, to see it. He's just gonna sit around, no? Let's be real. Um, it is one of the faults of Maldini, and he, he, he wasn't perfect as much as uh, I respect him as a man and as a. An Let me tell you, he was essential for the pull power when Milan didn't have much going 100%. for it. I don't like the way his his exit was handled at all, at, at all, all, at all. But I do believe that maybe in today's game. 
for example, we'd, we'd never have sold Tonali. And I do yeah. think selling Tonali was in our best interest. And I do believe that the players, we got to make us a better team than we were last year. Even though maybe we didn't sign anyone at Tonali's current level. But just having that depth, mm-hmm. you know, does make us a better team. Yes, yes, Absolutely. I agree. So, yeah, I, think. I agree. I, um, for my top four, I have question marks regarding Inter, considering their Mercato. Um, but I think Inter will finish in fourth. I think Juve will finish in third. I think Napoli will finish in second. I'm going to say that Milan, it, it won't be a landslide victory for Milan by all means. I think it'll go to the final day, but I think Milan just nick it over Napoli. Mental, huh? Atalanta we'll fifth. See. We'll see. I have a few non-Milan related questions, guys. Um, which non-Milan related departing player will you miss most next season? Sergey. Sergey, uh, you know I agree with you. It's it's definitely Sergey. Has to be Sergey, yeah. man. No, no one's like him, like we said before. No. Followed by Vicario. <laughs> Followed by Vicario. For me. Oh my God! Yeah. Yes, yes, those two. You guys, do you have anyone that you enjoyed watching that's gone? I think Skriniar has a big loss in terms of quality mm-hmm. of the league. Uh, Brozovic too, mm-hmm. but I don't feel that the league has lost anyone on, on, on SMS's level. Mm-hmm. I, I feel that. Hopefully someone else steps up and sort of fills those shoes. But I, I do feel that as a league, I mean, it's best the best it's been in a while, you know, even yeah. competitiveness. You have six sure. teams fighting neck and neck and it's impossible to say, I mean, you could say the Premier League has sort of something similar going on, but I mean, the city has been dominating and I don't see that stopping anytime soon. But so, even in the top five, expenditure-wise, say I was second to, to the Barclays. So, uh, I, I, do <laughs> I, I do feel like we are on the rise. Yeah. I'm gonna miss Tatarizar. Tatarizar, <laughs> yeah, man. He's making banks in making Saudi money, Arabia. Guy is making 1.8 money. fully deserves. deserves every cent of that money, man. For that not, Tatar of that Tatar of that Tatar of that Not for last January. No. 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 But with, he had an astigmatism. We don't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> Which non Milan related arrival are you most excited to see? For me, it's Big Scammy. Scamacca. Yeah, to, to be honest, I mean, when we were linked to him, I, I thought he'd be like an immobile kind of player where he le- stupidly left Serie A, where, mm. he, where his place is in Serie A. Yes. Um, and, you know, immobile when he came to Lazio, he ended up being their all time top scorer. Yes. So mm. I think Skamaka has, has a, you don't score 18 goals for, for nothing, you know, exactly. there, there is some talent there. So um, I'm sorry, I don't know how many had scored 17, 18, but whatever. But mm. everyone at West Ham said he was a misunderstood player over there. Yes. Yeah, so I think he's, a, I, I, that's, that's probably a really good shot. Mm. I, I would agree Skamaka particularly at Atalanta mm. I feel like when it comes to bringing the best out of players Atalanta excel at that I'm also really excited for summer so, <laughs> for, for a particular reason <laughs> and Paul I like, I like our of Roma oh yeah mm. he's a player we've been linked to in the past yes. I think um, there's a point to prove I mean I think five six years ago he was considered to be like one of the next big big players Hopefully, Roma don't play the classic terrorism ball. That <laughs> yeah, the, I, mean. I mean, there was a game against Milan last year. I think we played them at the Olympico where it was a tough watch, you know, time yeah. wasting. And uh, But I, I do feel that he's maybe the player that they need and I don't think that, that he's going to shine this year. Yeah. I watched that game on my phone in Crete on a bus. I'm sure you regretted every minute. I regretted every wasted. minute and I wasn't looking out of the window and the nature was beautiful and every time with the nature I was I was very frustrated because the internet would cut. Not to mention bro how you watched the World Cup final. No, was it not in a in a Jeep in South Africa where it was pissing down No, the I I was in a Jeep on a safari. Um I told everyone on the Jeep not to talk about the final. Um, we went to the hotel after when the World Cup final had ended um, and I texted you and ah. you sent me a link of the replay with no spoiler in it and I spent yeah, yeah, like yeah, three yeah. in the morning watching it not knowing, uh, not knowing who won what like, a game what a game, game dude do you, do you know what the only game of Milan I missed last season was what? Milan 4 n- sorry Napoli nil, Milan 4 bro that was I, I was in, in you know I spent a month in Australia Stress, bro. this year yeah and I was waking up at 4 a.m. to watch Milan. Shit at that time, yes, man. man. I was constantly waking up at 4 a.m. to watch Milan. I watched all of the games, I except remember, I remember. there was one time we were in this hotel room um, in Cairns, 
and there there was no Wi-Fi, no reception, no uh, anything. Yeah, I woke up at four a.m. Yeah. to watch it. I woke up at three thirty, like and trying to make it work. You couldn't make it work, right? No, and then and then I set another alarm for the second the game ends. I woke up, I see Napoli, and I'm like, okay, that's great, Milan four, yeah, and I like, lost what my mind. Fuck, literally, happen, man. Yeah. Literally. I don't think you should watch another game next season. Yeah. Sure. So, guys, for those of you wondering where Flynn is, he's gone. He had other plans. Um, thank you very much for coming, Flynn. We appreciate you. Your football opinions are amazing. You're very rational. And you have this deep hatred towards Inter that um, yeah, that's that's very Thanks funny you know. and 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 it's it's fun yeah it's just fun mm. to, to listen to. Um, guys, we spoke about who's getting top four. Who's getting relegated next year? I, now, I'm probably going to get this wrong, right? But I have a feeling, okay? Um, my feeling is that despite Frosinone coming first last year, I, I think they go back down to bed. Mm-hmm. I think Cagliari and Genoa survive. I think having Serie A pedigree um, is very important. So I think I think they stay up. Um I have a feeling Empoli gets relegated, and I have a feeling that Lecce gets relegated. So Frosinone, Lecce, Empoli. Mm. All right. I think personally that it's going to be Frosinone, Lecce, and Cagliari. Because Cagliari have Lapadula and Rog out, man. Long term uh, injuries and Lapadula is, is a guy you want to start the season with to give you confidence. So, unless they, they bring in someone capable, I don't know, man, it's not looking great for them. No, that's true, that's true. All and right. uh, I don't see Frozenone staying up either. I think poor guys will get sent right back to beat. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, Caleri not looking too strong. I mean, I think they need some work. To be done, and I don't really see Lecce staying up either, to be honest. But let's hope we have another good relegation battle like we did yes. last year. I mean, last year we can't forget the drama of the the Spezia against uh, Verona, man. That stuff was finally. crazy, and I like how they added that because I don't think any other leagues in Europe have that. Do I don't they? think so. I don't think so. I don't so. think they do. Uh, I I really enjoyed that. I was um, at no, what last a game. game! What a it game! It was man. great. Game. It was the Suarez was handball of the line of who was it? Um, Ah yes, bro. Who who hands it off the line Suarez? in that in that what, game what, what in the in the playout final? Ah, oh my god, Faroni, bro. Faroni, Faroni. Oh, it paid yes. off, but yes. it doesn't pay off. It's like a right knob, man. <laughs> speaking speaking of right knob, yesterday I uploaded questions on Instagram and they've expired, and I can't see any of them. Oh my uh, god. Speaking of right knob, but I remember one of them, and I remember who asked it. We'll do this one, all right. Okay. Um, this question was asked by our bo- boy Luca Borge, and he said, "What's it like losing to Inter four times in a row?" Uh, it, 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 Lu- Luca Borge, the Inter fan. I guess so. I know. I know Luca. I used to play at Melita with him. Luca Borge, ninety-seven. Yeah, my, 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 yes, yes, yes. Lu- Luca, Luca. Shana <laughs> 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 al We used to have proper swearing banter together at, at, at higher secondary. Right? He's a top guy. He's a thank you for listening, man. It sucks, eh? Well, what, what, what can, what can we do about it? Next it's year will be a but different. But then, then again, I, I do feel that they deserve to win those games. I mean, uh-huh. they were they simply yes. outplayed us, and I hope that purely it does something because we always struggle against them. Man, I mean, uh, I don't think we play well against three five three five twos in general. No. And uh, I don't know, man. I hope maybe the new set of players yeah. mm. just combine in different ways and. I haven't seen us dominate a game against Inter in ages. No. I mean, even when we won 3-2 in the beginning of the season, they scored first. Uh-huh. And I, I can't remember a game against Inter where we where they didn't score first. I think the last time it yeah. happened was when Ibra scored that doppietta. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The season where we finished uh, second, second and got in the Champions mm. League for the first time after uh-huh. so long. Uh-huh. Like, so, uh, uh, yeah. like I, I have to respect the way that Inter have played football since their Conte days, like they, they play a great brand of football. Their quick transitions from defense into attack, especially with B- Barella back yeah, in the day, yeah. Brozovic as well. They're spectacular. Yesterday, when we were watching um, Milan Monza, there was a quick passage of play. Like, um, I believe Leao played it back to um, Loftus Cheek, and Loftus Cheek played the first time ball uh, through to Giroud, and Giroud just didn't get there. Um, but the passage of play was really smooth and really nice. 
Now, and I looked at Jake and I said, we looked like Inter mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. And, and it was a compliment to the way Milan were playing football. Yeah. We, we, there, we, we looked like Inter. I mean, a few teams played the 3-5-2 as good as Inter do. Yes, yeah. and, and I think the way Milan have spent in the market, okay, it's from experience out of Milan not succeeding with their 20 players. But I do feel like th- this idea, when we came up against Inter and we lost four times, whatever, last year, literally four times. I do feel like that played a big part. Yes, in yes. And, and I think we looked at them and we're like, these guys are getting stronger with each substitution yeah, they make yeah. and we're getting significantly I mean, weaker. They, they, they had the bench, you know. I mean, the, look up, okay, now he's, he's, he's the joke of football right now. And mm. I don't think I... I, I I, I disrespect the guy, I disrespect what he stands for, you know, he, he, he pulled a fast on Inter when they were the ones to give him a second chance, you literally, know, so, literally. but I mean, they have, they bring on Lukaku, they bring on Correa, who I don't think the Inter fans particularly love, he's a bit of a banter player for them, oh. but I mean, we've seen what he's capable of, he's a good player, he's, he's, he's effective, you know, oh. and they bring on these guys, man, and and see Milan bringing on Messias, you know, Salamakers. Yeah, I do yeah, feel yeah. like depth played a big role, but something I didn't mention before is that um, I do feel like in this transfer market, Milan decided to sign players that are versatile and can play yes, a, a number different. of positions, which really leaves the door open for purely to experiment a bit. For example, Pulisic, man. He can yeah. play left wing, he can play cam, he can play right wing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Okafor, left wing striker, you know, I mean, Literally. our midfielders can practically play every role. I mean, Kronich, is, Kronich can play as a pure, uh, as a Mezzala, he can play as a CDM, Benasser too, Loftus-Cheek too, as well. Reinders too, Musa Fort- too, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I think yeah. this interchange, uh, players can interchange, switch positions, it can make us less predictable and I think that was something which was specifically sought after when deciding to sign the players that we did. Completely, yes, man, yes. completely agreed. Very true. Um, yeah, um, I don't really have any more talking points apart from the fact that Buffon has finally retired at the tender age of about 45 time, years old. Um, what he was doing in Sayaba wasn't exactly crazy. No, man, I feel like you do have to let go at a certain yeah. point. Uh-huh. I, do, I do respect his love for the game, but sometimes you have to have, like, <sighs> I was sure he'd do a year in Saudi Arabia. He should have to. He should, should have. Yes, I mean, yes. Get a bag and you're exactly. on your way. You know? do, you, so. do you know a fun fact about Buffon is that he had an ex-girlfriend. Well, obviously, Buffon's a good looking guy. Mm-hmm. Apparently, but, hung like a horse. He had an ex-girlfriend that, that <laughs> I, I swear to God, he had an ex-girlfriend. Where's this this was on, this this I remember. It was on a going? magazine, bro. Those Where magazines, like the going? Match magazine yeah. and stuff we used to, we used to yeah. read back in the day. What did the guy do? His ex-girlfriend said that she was begging him and convincing him to become a porn star. Ah, yes. And, dude. D- d- well, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and, bro, yeah. well, and I'm the open porn <laughs> hub. <laughs> you, know, you never know, man. Maybe some... Well, Deli Ali has one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you sure has a photo. But uh, speaking uh, about Buffon, man, I mean, I respect what he's done in his career, but come on, man. I mean, as Milan fans, you have to always keep in mind that Montari fiasco, and yes. uh, that does make him lose a bit of credibility in my eyes. But at the end of the day, I'm sure you fans respect what he's done, and if he, the guy lived and died for the badge, so I do, uh-huh. I do, I do understand it. But I mean, mm-hmm. so it's gonna leave a sour taste in a Milan fan's mouth, you know. Mm. Longevity-wise, you look at a player who has, who's more decorated than Buffon, is Iker Casillas. Uh-huh. At the age of 33, he was done. Finished. Uh-huh. Finished. I, I, mm-hmm. At the age of... Buffon C- was Casillas, still going to the Casillas never had that... Oh, God. Fucking Cas- fireworks. Casillas so. never let's had wrap the, this up. Yeah, Casillas <laughs> didn't have the mental strength Buffon has, I believe. I think as a shot stopper, he's on par with him. But as a complete goalkeeper... Buffon had the whole package for because sure, he has did sure. Yes, yep. um, Castrovilli's knee has stopped him from making a move to Bournemouth, and probably that's, no one will buy that's him. That's huge. That's huge. Yes, that's yes. I, I rated the guy a few years ago, but I think he's going to end up as one of those Andrea Pauli type yeah, yeah, players, you know, who just slowly fade been. out and up, end up in the lower teams in the league, you know. Mm-hmm. Yes. And finally, Juve fans have a message to Lukaku, which basically says, "Stay in Milan. We already have a third keeper." <laughs> I, like second, it. I, love, I love that one, man. I love it. <laughs> it's so one. good. Roasted. Like. And apparently, the guy has been negotiating with you for, for around three months. Yeah, before, yeah, the before, the before the Champions League, 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 League final. Yeah. So. It might happen, genuinely. Yeah? Mm-hmm. But now, maybe the fan pushback. Apparently, spend their last 
No, they're Friendly, right. They're yeah. right, man. They don't yeah. blame them, you know. Of uh, course, selling Vlaovic to bring in Lukaku is a mercenary, man. Granted, it might get you a top four finish, but it's not good business no. in the long run. I think no. maybe Lukaku suits Allegri's play style a bit more. Yes, the guy likes to absorb pressure and uh, and try and break on the counter. You know, you, Allegri was never known for his beautiful yeah. football, and I don't think Vlaovic has that kind of pace which an Allegri striker needs to have. Yeah, yeah, true for sure. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for listening. We have been say a spotlight. Thank you, Luca Panzavecchia and Benjamin Flynn for joining. <laughs> um, you were great. Thank you. We really appreciate it. It was great fun. Um, remember to follow us on Instagram, on Twitter, Facebook. We're actually using Facebook nowadays. We found a way to sync it to Instagram. So like it's you doing its own thing. You don't have to follow us. YouTube, leave a comment on Spotify. There's a new feature at the bottom where you can leave a comment. Just write down Forza and your favorite team or whatever. Mm. Um, and feel free to reach reach out to us we have patreon you can become a patron to join our whatsapp chat please do that um yeah and the usual mm-hmm. begging and you, everything you want you want them to do something else while they're at it bro while yes, they're please. doing all of these things yes, is there anything else you want yes. them to do um, join our fantasy football league <laughs> uh, we have one slot available you can join by becoming a patreon a patron sorry mm. but yeah that, that's it that slot Unless anyone takes it from from our patrons, you can feel free to to jump in for that punch. Another punch. Another punch. Already involved in like one. You're in one. Two, yeah, I, think. I, think I think you're in one. The other one's a separate league. Uh, and then top five and top five will be amalgamated into Serie A next year. Bottom five and bottom five will be Serie B. So if you want to join another one, if none sure, of these right. legends, it will be my debut in, in Italian fantasy football. But hopefully, I have enough ball knowledge to be able to compete <laughs> yeah i think you will brother but thank you very much for listening guys we've been seria spotlight we love you all and we'll see you when the season starts leave a five-star rating <laughs> <laughs>